How's it going everyone? This video is going to be over SMT or smart money techniques or smart money tools. We'll first hop into a PDF to go over what it is, how to identify it, and then hop into the charts to go over a few examples and how it is used. Now if you haven't already, be sure to check the link in the description below for access to my free Discord. This is where I link all of the PDFs for all of my videos as well as answer people's questions. Now SMT is a technique used when looking at correlated pairs. For example, if we have ES and NQ, they are both correlated or should be moving in the same direction, so we can use those for SMT, or EU and GU, since those are correlated, or they are both against the dollar, we can use those as well. Now generally with correlated pairs or correlated assets, we're going to have similar structure. For example here, one pair or one asset puts in a low, and the other also puts in a low. Then we put in a higher low, and we also put in a higher low. Now what SMT is, is when one of these assets diverge from the other. So while this one was making a low and a higher low, this one made a low and a lower low. Now that divergence right there is an SMT. Now let's take a look at a bearish example. Here you can see they are both correlated, but when we have one diverging from the other, or one making a high and a higher high, while another is making a high and a lower high, that is an SMT. But let's hop into the charts and show how this can be used. So here we are in FX replay, and that's what we're going to be using to replay this as it makes it a lot easier to see the SMTs. Now just taking a look at the structure here, you can see we have a high, and looking at the same time over here we also have a high. Then we have a low, and at the same time we have a low. Then we have another high, and another high. You can see how these are correlated assets, which is the S&P futures and NASDAQ futures. You can see we go down, make a low, a high, and we continue lower. So these are correlated assets. So just looking at the current price action here and marking out this high, if one is going to make a higher high, we'd expect the other to make a higher high as well. Let's see what happens. And you can see we have made a higher high on S&P futures. However, did we make a higher high on NASDAQ? No. So what is that? That is an SMT. So letting this continue to play out, let's see what happens. You can see we do end up making a higher high. However, relative to this high here, we still have not yet made a higher high on NASDAQ. And here we get displacement down. Now how can SMT be used? Well, it is really a confluence to a reversal. So if I already have a pre-existing idea, or a higher time frame level, I can look for SMT to confirm that reversal. So let's say here I was looking for a reversal or a downside move to sell side liquidity here, and then we get a Judas up after midnight open, London puts in a high a day, and we also have an SMT here. Well then I can anticipate price moving and continuing lower to sell side liquidity, trusting that this SMT will confirm the reversal and this high will not be touched. So let's see if we go reach for those lows. And there we do reach for those lows. You can see this SMT was not the main reason that we reversed here. However, it is a confluence to the reversal. Now, one thing I'll talk about here, just because it's a good example, is if we're looking at the higher time frames, you can also see lower time frame SMTs. Now, remembering that all an SMT is is a divergence, let's take a look at this wick right here. This is our 11 o'clock low. Now, if we mark that out, we know there is a low there. Now if we mark out our 11 o'clock low here, it is right here. You see how on ES we go and take this low here, on NASDAQ we do not. That is going to be a lower time frame SMT. Let's drop down to the 5 minute chart, and you can see here on the 5 minute chart, with my cursor and the vertical lines matching up, we have a low right here, ES makes a lower low, and NQ makes a higher low. And that is a confluence to this reversal here. I just wanted to throw that in there because that is how I look for SMTs on a lower time frame from a higher time frame chart. Now if you go searching for SMTs, you're going to find them everywhere. Now not all SMTs are important if they don't align with some sort of higher time frame level or idea. Now spots where I generally look for SMTs are on session highs and lows, previous days high and lows, and at higher time frame levels on a lower time frame when I'm searching for a reversal. So for example here, I've marked out our London high here on both ES and NQ. 
So let's let this play out and see what happens. So you can see we have taken London High on ES here. Have we taken London High on NQ? Not yet. Does this mean I'm going to short it right away? No, because SMT is just a confluence. I need the structure and everything else to align to use it as confirmation. So let's let this go ahead. You can see, are we going to take this high? Now, if we take this high on NQ, there is no SMT anymore. So let's see what happens. We don't take the SMT. Now we have a bullish PD array. Let's see if it is respected. It is not. And we are likely to continue lower from here. And you can see how that SMT was the reversal point there. And ideally, we'd want to run this low. And there we go. We do run that low. So ideally, when I'm searching for SMTs, it's not at a random level or just random time. I'm looking for session highs and lows, previous days highs and lows. And then if I have a point of interest, let's say I'm looking at an hourly fair value gap, then I'm going to use a five minute chart. And if I have an SMT on the five minute time frame, I'll use that as a confirmation to my entry model for the reversal. So now let's take a look at an example of a Forex SMT. So take a moment here and look at the two charts, compare the structure, and what do you see? Well, if you're taking a look at this low here and draw that out, what do we see? Well, we see that EU made a lower low, while GU made a higher low. So we have an SMT. Does this mean I'm going to just long it right here? No. I'm going to wait for some confirmation or for structure to align. So letting this play out, I don't see any displacement up or a reason to be long. Now we get an aggressive move lower. Now, what else do we notice about this move lower? What did it take out? Well, it took out a low here. Marking out that same low on EU, did it take it out? No. So now we have multiple SMTs here, right? So getting rid of this first one, so you can see this a little easier. We have GU here making a lower low, while EU is making a higher low. So now let's see if we get any displacement out of here. We do get displacement out of here. What do we have with these up close candles here? We have a low, high, lower low, higher high. Now looking to take this entry, going to look to enter this unicorn on the breaker block. My stop below the breaker and the fair value gap if it wants to trade back into it. And then my target is on these failure swings here for a 3.2R. So looking to enter a trade here. Let's see how this works out. We get tagged in here. We get a sweep, now displacement out. Now if this is going to continue higher, I want to see what? Down close candles support price higher. So let's see. Now we have down close candles, close over. I want to see it support it higher. Another down close candle supporting it higher. And there we go, we hit our take profit. So you can see this is how I would use it in a reversal. I don't just blindly long something because of an SMT. I'm going to wait for an actual setup and then use this SMT to confirm it. Let's take a look at another example of SMT here. Here we have NASDAQ reaching into a daily fair value gap and displacing lower. Now, why am I not interested in taking a short here? Well, what do we have coming up at 8.30? We have CPI. So I'm going to wait for post CPI to be looking for an opportunity. So here we get CPI release, and what do we notice about the highs here into the fair value gap? Well, NASDAQ takes the high, ES does not take the high. So they are diverging from one another, creating an SMT. So now I'm anticipating this high to hold, so I'm going to be looking for a short entry. Now if we have a high, low, higher high, lower low, what does this down close candle become? Well, that is a breaker block. So looking to take an entry on the breaker block, why would I swap my stop on this high instead of just by the breaker block? Well, this isn't a super clean breaker block for me, but also with CPI, there's more volatility. 
I'd prefer to have my stop on a high that ran another high, creating high resistance liquidity. Now that also leads me into a question of which one do I choose with an SMT? Do I choose the one that made the higher high or do I choose the one that didn't showing its weakness? And really this depends on the higher time frame setup and relative strength. It kind of comes down to personal opinion and what you think is going to be stronger or weaker. In this case with a high news release, I prefer the one that swept liquidity, giving high resistance liquidity. So I'll be looking for NASDAQ here. Then looking to target the lows here. Let's go ahead and zoom into NASDAQ. You can see we have some equal lows resting down here. So looking to take an entry here, targeting those lows. Let's see how this works out. So here we get tagged in. You can see why I have my stop on the high resistance liquidity. You can also see how the body did not close over this breaker block and it is respecting. It just has a lot of volatility and a lot of range. You can see quite a bit of range in this move. We displace lower. Now if we do retrace back up two up close candles in an order block, I'd expect that to push it lower. And there we go. So if I was to miss this first entry, I could be looking for a lower time frame entry in here. And so we can actually hop down and do that real quick. We have a 15 minute PD array, I'm gonna drop down to a one minute chart, and then I'm gonna be looking for some sort of one minute setup. We reach into that PD array, displace, close below the series of up close candles here, changing the state of delivery. I could even look to just take an entry here, with my stop on this high, or I could look for a premium or this fair value gap, really anywhere in here looking to take an entry. I then could look to target this low, but ideally reaching for our original draw on liquidity. Now with a 1.65R, I prefer to have 2R, so I'd likely put my entry on this fair value gap here to get me 2R. So that is how I would do it if I missed this initial entry or if I wanted to wait for a confirmation entry. So going back to the 15 minute chart, you can see how that worked out there. Now for inversely correlated pairs or assets, we want to see the same structure, but just flipped over. So for example here, if we have Euro USD versus the dollar, those are going to be inversely correlated, but we want to see the same structure. So for example, if we create a high, we want to see a low. If we create a higher high, we'd want to see a lower low. And then for example, if we have a high and a lower high, I'd want to see a low and a higher low. Now if one of these is diverging, so if we see a high, we want to see a low but we have a higher high, I'd wanna see a lower low, but we have a higher low. Similarly over here, we have a high and a low. Here we have a lower high. We'd expect to see a higher low, but we see a lower low. This would be the SMT. So let's hop into the charts and look at a few examples of identifying this. So here we are with a Euro USD chart and a dollar chart, which are inversely correlated. So if you notice right here, when we put in this low, we'd anticipate a high being put in. If we put in a higher low, we'd want to see a lower high. This is the correlation between those. So you can see we have a low right here and then a high right there as well. So let's mark out this range and see if we can find any SMTs occurring. So here I have the same highs and same lows marked out on each one. So if we create a high here on the dollar, we'd want to see a new low on Euro and vice versa. Let's move ahead and see what happens. So here you can see, we're just still inside the range. And now you see our first SMT. So you see this low here, we have a higher low relative to that, but with the dollar, we'd anticipate a lower high, but we get a higher low. So we have an SMT here and a potential reversal. Here we get that reversal. Let's see what happens next. So you can see here, do we take this high? We do not. But over here on the Euro chart, we do. So now we have an SMT on this low as well. So I could be looking for a reversal to the downside here on the dollar or upside with the Euro. And we do get that. And then the next low I'm looking at is here, this 10 AM. So here we do have an SMT. However, Euro has caught up, so we'll see if it takes this high or not. Does not currently take the high, 
potentially a reversal here. And it does not, and it does go take that high, and we continue lower on the dollar. So that is an example of just spotting SMTs on inversely correlated assets. You kind of have to do the opposite. So if you see a new high, then you want to look for a new low on the other asset and vice versa. It definitely takes some practice and some getting used to, but hopefully this video will help you out. The last thing we're going to talk about is an SMT within a fair value gap. Marking out the same fair value gap here on ES as well as on NQ, how do we form an SMT into a fair value gap? Well, as we let this play ahead, you can see that price on ES reaches back into this fair value gap, all on NQ it doesn't. So is this an SMT? Yes. And now let me explain why. If you understand internal range liquidity, you know this fair value gap is made up of a low right here and a high right here. So if price reaches back up into this fair value gap, it's reaching above this high here, while on NQ, it's not reaching above this high. So then, as we let it continue, we get a reaction to move lower. Now let's drop down to a lower time frame so this makes more sense. So down here on the one minute chart, you can see this is the high that creates that 15 minute fair value gap. And similarly right here, this is the high that makes that 15 minute fair value gap. Here on ES, we reach above this high into the fair value gap. And then on NQ, we can't reach above this high. So basically looking for an SMT within a fair value gap or a PD array, is just utilizing the smaller time frames SMT without dropping down to the lower time frame. Now I hope you learned something in this video and found it helpful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.